it in parentheses for you so you could see that growth, we're going to add the rates to 1. Okay, growth is going to be 1 plus our rate, but remember the rate must be expressed as a decimal by moving it two places to the left. So if it's 8.5%, you've got to move that decimal two places. That becomes 0 0.085 when you plug it into your equation. Uh, slightly different um, notation here. Okay, P of T is still re uh, representing the amount after a certain amount of time. After T years, that's the left side. P sub zero is just another way to represent your initial value or um, the reason why they're using P here is it's typically referring to principal. Usually we're talking about money. Principal is how much you invest. So P sub zero is the same as our initial value. Okay, T must be in years. T must be in years. Okay, now all the problems that we've been dealing with so far, um, they have been compounding once a year, annually, okay, one time a year. But you, that's very unusual, okay? Usually you earn interest every month, okay? Usually you earn interest every month. So we can modify that model a little bit. Um, notice the second one there, the only difference is we have this N, Okay, we have this n. So that's the number of times per year. n is the number of times per year. So if it says monthly, what is n? n is 12. If it compounds monthly, there are 12 months in a year. So that's going to happen 12 times every year. If it says weekly, how many weeks are in a year? 52. There are 52 weeks in a year. If it's daily, we're going to go with just 365. Okay, We're just going to go with 365. We're not going to talk about leap years or anything. Um, I'm trying to think of the other common ones. Monthly, weekly, daily. That's usually all you're going to run into. Continuously compounding interest, I have no idea why there's a zero there. The typo. Um, that zero is not supposed to be there. Okay, continuously compounding means that it is compounding like every possible second. Um, that model, we still have P sub zero being our initial value. Okay, that's still that piece right there. E is the number on your calculator. It's a button on your calculator. And then for the exponent of E, you put your rate and your time. Okay, for the exponent on E, that's the RT. I call this PERT, PE to the RT. I'm going to start with times E raised to the R times T. So R still has to be a decimal. Anytime you plug them in, it has to be a decimal. Other common problems are half-life, or um, it's another type of decay, and doubling. So you can have a half-life. They'll tell you how long a half-life is. Who knows what a half-life means in biology? What does a half-life mean? Y'all heard of carbon-14 dating? Y'all pet biology, right? Yeah. Carbon-14 dating. The reason why they use that is because carbon-14 has a very long half-life. So it stays uh, within a organism for a really, really long time. It's like 5,000 and some years. But what it means is that a half-life means after that amount of time, Say the half-life is 20 days. If I started with 100 grams of that material, after 20 days, I would have half of what I started with. I'd have 50 grams left. 
if my material had a half-life of 20 days. Okay, that's what a half-life means. Um, how long it takes for half of the material to decay. Um, doubling, okay, they, you may have a situation, a lot of times bacteria growth is a doubling problem. Um, a bacteria will double every six hours. Um, so that, that's that kind of problem. So we're actually, flip your paper over, we're going to look at a couple of problems using these models. So example one says, suppose a culture of 100 bacteria is put into a petri dish and the culture doubles every hour. Predict when the number of bacteria will be 350,000. So let's set up our model. Um, let's say I think we used f of t on the other side there. Okay, so how many bacteria we have after t hours in this case because we're told that it doubles every hour is equal to our initial value. What's our initial value? 100. We start with 100 bacteria. It is doubling, so the base is 2, raised to the t over n. Well, n is how frequently it doubles. It doubles every hour, so in this case, n is 1. Okay, n is 1 here. So the question is, predict when the number of bacteria will be 350,000. So 350,000 goes on the left side of our equation. And we need to solve that. What do we do to solve that? Plug it into our calculator and fix our window, right? So everybody needs to be doing this because there's some of you that still are messing it up. Uh, 350,100 times 2 to the t, or in this case just use the x. Doesn't matter which one's in y1, which one's in y2, it really does not matter. We need to change our window because this is not going to work. Okay, x is still representing time, so we still don't need to worry about negative values. Um, I don't know, probably, how long do you think this will take? We're talking about hours. How many hours do you think it'll take 100 bacteria to grow into 350,000 bacteria? Somebody throw out an estimate. Five. Five? Eleven? Twelve? Okay, let's try it. Let's try twelve. Let's see if twelve is big enough. Okay. Um, our y values, ooh. It's got to be 350,000. So how about we do 300,000 and 400,000? So we kind of, you know, uh, sandwich what we're looking for. So there's the 350,000. Uh, ooh, just snuck it in over there. I didn't know if it was going to graph. So let's find our intersection. Second, calculate, intersect, enter, enter, enter. Ooh, very close. 11 point, we'll say 7, 7 hours. So, yeah, very, very close to 12 hours. 77, that's about 0 0.75, so that's about 11 hours and 45 minutes. It's close to 12 hours, yeah. So that's kind of scary, though. It's kind of scary that 100 bacteria in less than 12 hours can turn into 350,000 bacteria. Ugh, gross. Gross. That's the easy one. You just got to plug in 24. Yeah, for T. So let's find that out. How many would we have in one day in a 24-hour period? That's the easy one. All you have to do is plug in the time, in for t. Oh my. Wow. That's a lot. Um, one, two, one billion six hundred and seventy-seven million seven hundred and twenty-one thousand six hundred bacteria. Now, granted, that is considering that there are no restrictions on the growth of the bacteria. Typically, there are. Um, like that petri dish is not going to hold that many bacteria. 
Okay, they're going to run out of stuff to feed on. Um, but if this had just free reign of whatever I wanted to do, yeah, that, that's a lot. That sure is a lot. Okay, let's look at a half-life problem. Let's look at a half-life problem. Suppose the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 20 days, and there are 5 grams present initially. Find the time when there will be 1 gram of the substance remaining. So let's begin with setting up our equation. Okay, we start with 5 grams. This is a half-life problem, so our base is 1 half. T over the length of the half-life. The length of the half-life is 20 days. So this is our model. We want to know when there will be 1 gram, so we set it equal to 1 gram. And let's graph it. We've got 5, 1 half. Now be careful with this. When you do the exponent, you've got to put parentheses around the exponent because there's more than just x in the exponent. Okay, make sure you have parentheses around that x over 20 or you won't end up with the right one. Now we really need to fix our window here. Um, what do y'all think? What do y'all think? If we start with 5 and every 20 days we've got half of what we started with, so tell me this, after 20 days how much will we have? 2.5. Okay. After 20 more days, so after 40 days, how much will we have? What's half of 2.5? 1.25. So that's getting close. So it's got to be at least 40 days. Uh, will it be more than 60? Will it be more than one more half-life? No, because half of 1.25 is like 0.6 something. Anyways, um, so 60 has got to be our maximum there. Uh, oh, and guess what? We're back in the land of small numbers. Uh, so I'll do negative 1 to 5 for my y's. And let's find the intersection. There's our model. Very beautiful exponential curve right there. Let's find out where it intersects with 1. 46.44 days. Approximately 46.44 days. Make sure you put units with these application problems. Okay, they always have a context, so you need to put units with them. Okay, they, get, they tell us we have an investment of $2,000. It earns 5.75% interest, which is compounded quarterly. Okay, the ones that we've done so far were compounded annually, once a year. Quarterly means every three months, which is how many times in a year? Four. Four. Okay, um, four times in a year. So let's set up our equation here. We have our principal after amount of time. Okay, we start with... Our investment, 2,000 times 1 plus our rate, because we are growing. Don't forget to change it to a decimal, so 0 0.0575 over how many times it happens in a year. Four times raised to the 4 times t. Okay, so there's just a little extra piece there in our model. Okay, we've got that 4 thrown in there twice. After approximately how many years will the investment be worth $3,000? So let's set our equation equal to $3,000 and graph it. Now again, I wanted to show you this to show you what you need to be careful of in your calculator. When you type this in, 2,000, parentheses, 1 plus, you need to put 0 0.0575. Oh, so disappointing. You think you have to sneeze and then you don't. Divided by 4, close your parentheses, close your parentheses, raise to the parentheses 4x. 
Okay, so several set of parentheses involved here. 